Small Glued Books. We need a couple of very basic tools in order to do this particular project. I've got here a paint tray and a small foam roller from the dollar store. Nothing fancy. This is a neat little trick that I learned online. This is a full ream of paper that has been clamped together and glued at the end, basically making a pad, a pad of clean white paper. You'll see why we need this in a little while. This is Bind Art Acid-Free Adhesive. Essentially, it is white glue, very similar to any other white glue that you've used before. It's acid-free, and it's a PVA glue. So let's get started here by pouring a small amount of our white glue into our tray. The foam roller uses a surprising amount of glue, so sometimes you end up having to replenish. Into the glue I add maybe 20% of that total volume in water. And then using my foam roller, I'm going to roll it back and forth to mix the glue. This also then forces the glue into the foam. It's important to note that this is a foam roller and not a nap roller, a, a regular painting roller. You can find these at hobby stores and the dollar store and so on. So here's my big pad of paper. And I'm going to start with a piece of washi that I've cut that will serve the purpose of being the outside cover for this book enclosure that I'm making. And so very carefully I'm going to roll on a thin amount of our thinned glue onto the back side of the washi. This happens to be Chiogami, which is a screen printed washi, but it could be any sort of thin washi style paper and carefully move that out of the way and I'm going to lay my washi back down on a clean surface. Next I have some bookboard. Bookboard is just thick cardboard. All sorts of cardboards and mat boards will work here. This happens to be marketed as a bookboard. And you can't see it on the screen but I have very small marks to indicate where I need to place my board down. Now you can be as fussy and as careful in this process as you want to be and in fact the fussier and more careful you are the better. So I placed my my pieces of cardboard, my bookboard down on the back side of the paper with the wet glue, pushing it down making sure that the edges are in place and then using a knife, I could use scissors as well, I'm going to cut the corner off all four sides. I usually leave four millimeters or so from the corner of the book board to where I'm cutting. You could go a little less, you could go a little more. Now because this glue dries fairly quickly in the paper and on the board for that matter, I put a small strip of glue, I'm trying not to hit the table if I can, around the edge and then I'm going to begin folding up my Chiogami paper. And I'm just using my fingers here. In a moment I'll take out my bone folder. But I'm pushing this down and this paper is remarkably pliable. It soaks up the glue and it sticks really really well. So I tend to go from one edge and then to the opposite. I'll tuck up the corners a little bit. There's all sorts of ways to do this. But because this paper is so pliable, pushing it into place and then kind of tucking and tapping it with either your finger or a bone folder or some other implement really helps to get the corners nice and tight. Here's my bone folder. You can get a bone folder at the art store or at hobby shops online as well. This one happens to be made out of actual bone but they, they're made out of plastic now as well. And there's the, the main part of the book from the outside. So back to my pad and here's why I have this big pad. I'm going to take off that top sheet and what that allows me is to have a perfectly clean surface to glue the next thing. This is a little strip 
that is made from the same paper that's on the outside of the book. It could be something else, but it just happens to be what I have. And I'm going to use this on the inside of the book to reinforce the spine area. You can see that the paper and the spine is showing. So again, as carefully as I can be, I lay this down, centering it, and then press it down onto the cardboard, paying special attention to sticking the two papers together as well. You can see I'm going right down the spine, kind of pushing. And this paper is malleable. While it's wet, it's, it's relatively malleable. I can use my bone folder to go in and touch those edges as well and ensure that I have nice crisp edges and nice contact between the top sheet and this inside piece. And there's a slightly closer look and you can see already that this is starting to look and act a bit like a book. So that inside strip there really just provides a little extra uh, strength but also flexibility. So from this side as well I can kind of push down just like that. So for my end pages I'm using a slightly different paper. This is again just some stuff that I had laying around. It's a crepe paper reacts a little bit differently than the Chiyogami, but I've glued it up on my pad of white paper in the exact same way, and then I will lay it down carefully and evenly on the inside of the book. I've already done the one part. I'm doing the second one here. Now, different papers will also wrinkle and they will lay down differently. The nice thing about this glue and these sorts of papers is that as they dry, they tend to tighten up a bit like a drum. So wrinkles, so long as you're careful, wrinkles generally aren't a problem. Now this thing is a homemade book press. And you're going to see how it works. It has a simple mechanism on top which is twisted to provide pressure. Several sheets of plywood inside. This happens to be plywood with a laminate coating on it. But what we're going to do with this device is sandwich our enclosure between two pieces of wax paper and then apply pressure, leaving this then to sit for at least half an hour, but ideally longer, potentially overnight. The wax paper is there that, to prevent any glue that might be on the enclosure from sticking to the plywood or something else. So I place that in the center on top of a piece of wax paper and then a second piece of wax paper on top of that. Some plywood, my top pressure plate, and then we'll screw this down. I don't need intense pressure. I'm going to turn it until I see and feel a little resistance and then turn it maybe half a turn more. So. The bonus part of this particular demonstration is that we're going to make a pamphlet which will then be bound as a book with the cover we just made all at the same time. I've got some paper cut to size, I've got an awl, I've got a bone folder, I've got some fancy thread, and a little template I've made out of cardboard and an old candle. So the first thing first, the simplest kind of book that we know how to make is the pamphlet book. So I take my sheets, I've got five sheets here, I line them up, fold in half, and then either using my bone folder or the end of a pen or my fingernail, I'll make a nice crisp crease. So there's only five sheets of paper here, but when folded over, that makes a small book of 10 sheets. Front and back, it's a 20 sheet book. This is thin paper, of course, different than thicker printmaking paper. So Here's my template. I've marked out five holes or the location of five holes. Place my phone book with a rodent who likes football onto my table and then a piece of cardboard on top of that. And then carefully lay out my pamphlet. I want to make sure that my spine stays in the same position. They don't move around because when I poke through with my awl I want the holes to go right through the center of each of those five sheets of paper. So you can start in the middle or on the end, it's really up to you. And because I want these holes perfect and I want the needle to pass through without any sort of problem, I don't want the thread to get caught, as I put the holes in I kind of twist slightly and that just makes a cleaner, slightly larger hole. 
There's the hole. There's the hole from the inside. So next comes the thread. This is a simple cotton thread that I got online. And I've measured out an appropriate length. And before I thread it, and certainly before I begin binding my book with it, I'm going to run it over an old candle. What's happening here is this wax is helping to kind of keep the thread from fraying as I stitch with it. And it also provides a little bit of lubrication. It just makes the process go a bit easier. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's a handy step to remember. And then I thread a needle. This particular needle is fairly blunt on the end. It's a pretty thick needle and it has a big eye on it. You can use kind of any kind of needle really, but I find a needle that's not too pointy keeps from having the needle catch the paper when you're doing your stitching. So my cover's been sitting for a sufficiently long time and I carefully undo the book press and I'll take it out. If you've been paying close attention, you'll notice that I stuck an extra little strip of decorative paper onto the outside of the spine. I did it in the exact same way, gluing it and sticking it down. It adds a bit of strength, but it's also decoration. When I fold my book over, it really starts to look like a book, which is good. So in order to sew this together with the paper that I've just punched, I'm going to have to put holes into the spine of my cover as well. So I'll use my template, and as carefully as I can, I will center it left to right and top to bottom on the spine, and then poke nice crisp holes. So here they are, and you should be able to see light going through those holes. And when I move my finger in behind, you can see I'm blocking the light. So I've got holes right down the center of the spine, and they will align with the signature, those sheets of paper that I folded and punched earlier. So one last check to ensure that the paper is going to sit inside of my cover with even spacing on all three sides, and I'm ready to start stitching. So I've got five holes here, or five stations, and you can kind of do this any way you like, but I tend to start at the center station, so station number three. And initially, I'm, I'm going only through the signature and then through the cover. That's really just because it's a bit easier to get things lined up the first time. As I then sew the subsequent stations into the signature, uh, I will go through the cover and the signature all at one time. So carefully pulling the thread through, I'll then open up my signature, find the, the loose end piece, which is maybe 10 centimeters long, and put my thumb on it in order to try to keep it in place. So we've all done the pamphlet stitch before, and essentially we go from outside to in, and then down, and then back outside of the book again. And here I am pulling the thread in the direction that I'm sewing. Rather than towards me or out away from the book, I pull it in the direction that I'm sewing and that ensures that my thread stays taut. So, like any pamphlet, I'm going to continue in and out of the book, essentially connecting the dots. In and out and in and out, down to all the stations. And in a moment, you're going to see that I will pop back up at a station next to the center station and I will tie the book off from the inside. So looking at the spine I've got one last dot to connect as it were. Here I am inside the book and there's one space left to connect. Now I don't sew through the book on this last on this last station simply because then I would have a piece of thread inside and a piece of thread outside. So instead I'm going to use my needle because it's much easier to use the needle to do this knot. I slide it under here just like that, essentially hooking the thread onto a bit of thread that's already been sewn through. And then now, if my fingers will get out of the way, I can tie a very simple knot, the same sort of knot you tie on your shoelace. I'll do it once, make sure that it's tight, do it a second time and then get my scissors 
and then snip it off. You can snip it really close so that you can barely see the knot. Or you can cut it like I'm about to do here, leaving a little extra. And there you have it, a really simple but really charming little book. You could bind your prints in this, you could make a sketchbook, this could be a notebook, this could be a diary in which you place your deepest desires and hopes and dreams. I don't know, totally up to you.